All right, how's it going guys? Johnny Rocket here. We are in a special place today. We're in where it all began for me. We're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in my backyard pool where I taught my first swim lessons. In this video, we're gonna talk about the freestyle stroke. What is the freestyle stroke? What is freestyle swimming? Freestyle originated as the Australian crawl. It was invented in Australia as a more efficient way to swim than breaststroke. Eventually it changed into the front crawl and now we call it freestyle. The modern term today is freestyle. The competitive swimming term is freestyle. Technically in a freestyle swimming event, you're allowed to dive in and swim any stroke you want if you're doing freestyle, but it has to remain the same stroke for the whole race. So let's say you had a 100 freestyle race and you dove in and swam at butterfly, you'd have to keep swimming at butterfly for the whole race. But that's what the word freestyle means. It gives you the freedom to do whatever stroke you want, so long as you stay on the same stroke for the entire race. Like every stroke, freestyle has three components to it. The first component is the head position or the breath. The second component are the arms. And the third component is the legs or the kick. So you have the head position, the pull, and the kick. When you breathe in freestyle, it's the only stroke where you breathe to the side instead of in front of you. When you swim breaststroke, you breathe in front of you. Butterfly, you breathe in front of you. Backstroke, you're not holding your breath. Freestyle is the only stroke where you take it to the side. But that is actually a more efficient way to take your breath. Because when you breathe to the side, your body can stay in line with itself. Your spine stays in line with the rest of your body line. And you can stay swimming forwards and more hydrodynamically. As opposed to butterfly and breaststroke, when you lift your head up to breathe, your body line halts. When breathing in freestyle, I recommend you breathe to the side and slightly behind you. Too many swimmers breathe to the side and slightly in front of them or they'll lift their ear up. I don't wanna be able to see your ear from the other side of the pool. Keep that ear in the water on your shoulder, maybe one goggle in, one goggle out, breathe to the side and slightly behind you. When swimmers breathe slightly in front of them, I've found that their body line dips and then they have a hard time getting started again. You also get your mouth way closer to the surface of the water when you try to breathe forward. If you're back here, your chin is technically popping farther out away from the water. It's a much more effective breath. Start your breath when you start the pull. Pretend like your hand and your nose are connected by a string. When the pull starts, the breath starts so that you've got your breath by time that arm comes back around. Too many people pull and then lift their face and their hand out of the water at the same time and then they're like, ah, I'm struggling, I can't get the breath in time, right? And they feel stuck or they get water in their mouth and that's uncomfortable for them. Start your breath when you start the pull. The other thing I recommend is blowing out your air before you turn to the side to breathe. It can be a steady bubble stream or it can be one final burst where you let out all the air as you're turning to the side. But if you're blowing out, when you turn to the side, all you have to do now is breathe in, just the inhale. It's half the breath. It cuts the breath time in half. So now instead of exhaling and inhaling before that arm comes crashing down, all you have to do is inhale. Finally, when it comes to the breath, I also recommend that you breathe every two strokes. Too many coaches out there, I think, teach breathing threes. And that's because when we teach kids to breathe threes, we're trying to get them used to breathing onto both sides so that someday when they find their favorite side, it's not biased from the very beginning. You also, they have a hard time balancing themselves in the water. So by breathing threes, we ha keep their body working equally on both sides, balanced in the water. But as an adult, you need more oxygen in your muscles. Your muscles have now grown much bigger and they require much more oxygen to keep firing properly. Otherwise you get that burning feeling in your, in your muscles or a lot of you guys have felt where you, you finish one length of the pool and you're like, I am exhausted. And you're like, I don't know why though, I'm a triathlete, I bike all the time, I run all the time, I used to be in the military, I'm a football player, what is the problem? Why am I so exhausted after just one length of swimming? It's because you're holding your breath too much. You wouldn't hold your breath when you weight lift or bike or run, you wouldn't hold your breath at the grocery store. Why would you hold your breath when you swim? Well, because you can't breathe underwater. I understand that, but why not breathing every two strokes? I'm never holding my breath now. I'm inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. That's a much more efficient way to swim. Makes you be able to last longer. If you want, watch the milers or the ocean swimmers, people who swim the longest distances in the Olympics, the longest races, they are all breathing 
every two strokes. The pole is the second component to the freestyle stroke. When you swim freestyle, I like to teach swimmers to swim like a superhero. You want both hands in this position out in front of you. One pole starts while the other remains at the, at the top, and then the other pole takes its turn from the original place. The reason I call it like superhero swimming, hopefully is obvious, you look like you're a superhero kind of flying through the water, but this is better and in contrast to pocket freestyle. What most swimmers do is they'll swim from back here with their head leading the way and they're super imbalanced. Front quadrant swimming is the key. It's the way to go, keeping your body balanced. You need this front quadrant out here balancing your body in the water so you don't start dipping backwards or getting out of control with no balance. Keep your balance by keeping your arms out in front. Think of it as like when you go out in, into a float, if you've ever been asked to float on your belly or if you've ever tried to float on your belly on your own, the first thing you probably did was you leaned forward with your arms out in front. You probably didn't just tip over with your arms by your side, right? Your, your body naturally, instinctually knew to put your arms out in front. Well, you're gonna swim like that too. Plus it's more hydrodynamic to have hands leading the way rather than your head. Each pull, you want a high elbow catch or an early vertical forearm. What that means is fingertips down, elbow remains high. This is a more effective catch rather than your elbow dropping behind and, and leading the pull back through. You want to get your fingertips almost underneath your elbow and pull through like that catch more water with this kind of a paddle. So it takes time and it takes practice. The arms have two components, the pull and the recovery. The pull is where the magic happens. That's where you're pro progressing through the water, creating momentum. The recovery part of the stroke needs to be just that. It needs to be recovery. Too many people are throwing their hands into the water from above the surface as if that's pushing them forward. It's not. You're just wasting energy and you're throwing energy into the wrong places. Your hand should just rest out in front while the other arm now is focusing on the pull because that's how you move forwards faster. Recovery, pull, recovery, pull. When your pull goes to the back of your, your body, it should be flexed. Your hand should flex as you push through the back of your pull. Too many people are pulling straight up like this flipping water up into the air, but all that's doing is pushing you down. The great Dave Thomas, uh, swim coach for USA Swimming, he likes to say that you're always swimming in the direction of the back of your hand. And I like that. That means that wherever your palm is facing, hopefully it's directly backwards as you pull. When it's up here, it doesn't really matter if you're a straight arm recovery person, middle, or you keep your hand close to yours. It usually depends on your shoulder makeup and, and your uh, body's anatomy and how flexible your arms are. Some people can't bring it in this close. I'm one of those people. My arm typically kind of stays in that middle zone because I'm not really flexible enough to keep it this close. I'm also not a straight arm recovery person, just never have been. The last component of freestyle is the kick or the legs. The kick is a little bit of a bigger flutter kick than what you would do on backstroke. Both are flutter kicks, but one is a little bit bigger than the other, and that's freestyle. The bigger kick kind of gives you control. Now, most people either kick with their legs too straight because that's what some coaches out there telling them, and some people bend their knees up uh, so much that their heels are coming up and kicking them in the rear end. Neither of those are what you want. You want your feet to kind of just drift behind you. You don't want to control it very much. You just want them to flutter and do their thing behind you. As you get stronger and more stable in the water, you can start to get it bigger. But for now, just let your feet dangle behind you. Let them do their thing. They're going to dance like, like jellyfish. Just let them do their thing. Very light fluttering. One of the common mistakes I see in beginners, though, is when they turn their head to the side to breathe, they'll stop kicking. Make sure you kick through the breath. You want to accelerate through the breath because when you turn your head to the side to breathe, your body's thrown out of balance just a little bit. So the stronger kick allows you to maintain the balance through the breath so you don't end up sinking during your breath. Keep kicking to keep you up. It's the same concept with whitewater rafting. They say when you start to go through the, the, the rough waves, you're supposed to paddle harder, paddle harder to keep the boat moving forward. Your body is the same way. When you turn your head to the side, it's like you're encountering rough water. So kick stronger through the breath. If you're looking for that smooth, graceful freestyle technique, then your idea that you should be focusing on is a skating technique. Kind of like ice skating or rollerblading. One foot pushes as the other foot glides forward, right? Your arms are like that. 
Your kick is keeping you moving forward. Now your arms are pulling as the other one pushes forward to glide. So you're kind of always extending your hands in opposite directions as much as you can. That'll allow your body to stay balanced in the water. So freestyle swimming is the most efficient way to swim in the water. It's the most common way and it's the fastest way. It's often used for training for longer distances by triathletes, by long distance swimmers, and even the average lap swimmer. If you watch the Olympics, you'll notice that the freestyle swimming times are always the fastest times of any of the four strokes. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you found this video helpful, splash that like button, subscribe to the channel for free, and consider becoming a member today. Check out the merch over on our digital store and follow us over on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, and Facebook for shorter clips and tips throughout the week. If you want to get in contact with me directly, you can text or email me right here. If you want your own private swim lessons in person or online, head over to our website and sign up today. Now let's get ready to rock it.